Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take a moment to go through the uh, homework for tonight. Uh, if anybody ever gets that joke, please let me know. All right, so what is surface tension? We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Now, uh, Miss, uh, if you had one of my subs today, they probably watched the video of me explaining the notes. I'm going to watch this video right now to help you uh, go through it. It's about three minutes. Welcome to a Mad Scientist production of Surface Tension, in which we will look at how intermolecular forces affect the surface of a liquid. So what is going on at the surface of a liquid? Let's take a look by shrinking to the nanoscale. So here we are looking at the individual molecules in a liquid, and let's say that each blue circle represents a molecule of water. Due to kinetic energy, the particles that make up a liquid are in constant random motion, and so they will have a random arrangement. You might expect the particles at the surface at the micro level to form a random surface as shown here. But what we should find out is how do intermolecular attractions influence the surface? First, let's look at intermolecular forces under the surface, where attractions of individual molecules pull on each other in all directions. At the surface, pull on the molecules is lateral and downward. There is negligible attractions above the molecules, and so the net force on surface molecules is downward. The result of this downward force is that surface particles are pulled down until counterbalanced by the compression resistance of the liquid. Surface molecules are compressed more tightly together at the surface, forming a sort of skin on the surface, with less distance between them compared to the molecules below them. Surface molecules also form a much smoother surface than one would expect from randomly moving molecules. What do you think surface tension would do to a liquid not confined in a container? In this model of a small water droplet, what is the net direction of the force on the surface molecules? That's right, it is toward the center. And so a free-falling drop of liquid takes on a spherical shape. Here we see water dripping from a faucet. If this does not look familiar to you, turn on your faucet at home with very little pressure and see what happens. Or do an internet search for the behavior of water in zero gravity to get a great view of surface tension. Water in particular has a very high surface tension. Do you know the reason for this? What creates the attraction between water molecules? In looking at an individual water molecule, we can see the particularly strong attraction between the oxygen and hydrogen due to their opposite charges. Hydrogen has a strong partial positive charge and oxygen a strong partial negative charge. This strong attraction occurs between any water molecules close by. The strong partial charges result in a strong attraction between water molecules called hydrogen bonding. Interestingly, there are creatures that have evolved to take advantage of water's high surface tension. The water strider is a common insect that you may have encountered. What adaptation in their feet has occurred to take advantage of water's surface tension? Think about it. See ya. All right, so because of their structure, water molecules have a positive side and a negative side, kind of like the poles of a magnet. This is why water molecules are often called, because they have poles, they are called a polar molecule. They have a positive side and a negative side. Uh, this polarity causes water molecules to stick together at their unlike charges. Which of these is not an example of this attraction? Well, again, the water strider, the bug that can travel across the water, that's because of surface tension. The drop of water forms because of surface tension. Water freezing into crystals is just a change of state, and a bubble is round and clings together because of surface tension. So all those are examples except for water freezing into crystals. Okay, so um, before I, we do this, he's going to drop drops of water onto a penny. I'm going to think he can add 15 drops to the uh, penny, and then we're going to go ahead and watch. Welcome back to Kids Fun Science. My name's Ken. Today's experiment is surface tension, drops of water on a penny. As always, adult supervision is required. What you need for this experiment is a penny, a pipette, or an eyedropper, and dish soap. So now you make a prediction on how many drops of water I'm able to put <coughs> on top of one penny. 
the object of this experiment is to see how many drops of water you can put onto a single penny before it spills over. So we will see how many I'm getting here, and as we do it, I will explain the science behind it. So as I continue to drop uh, drops of water on the penny, I'm going to tell you the science behind this. There are two different properties at work in this experiment, cohesion and surface tension. Cohesion is the attraction of light molecules to one another. In this case, the light molecules are the H2O molecules in the water drops. Surface tension is a special term we use to describe cohesion between water molecules. Water's cohesion and surface tension are special because of the hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are formed by the hydrogen atoms in one molecule being attracted to the oxygen atoms in another molecule. The cohesion of the surface tension of the water becomes apparent when the drops of water you add to the each penny reach at the edge of the penny. Once the water has reached the edge, you begin to see a bubble or dome of water forming on top of the penny, as seen here. The bubble shape is a result of the water molecules clinging to one another in an optional shape. So it gets to the point where it can't, ha <laughs> it ha can't handle anymore. 25 drops is not bad. Oh, I have got over 30. So I'll try it one more time here, and I will uh, speed it up to see how many drops I can get. The um, dome that they're cleaning around, making that shape, that dome, is just like the bond. All right, so that kind of ends. Uh, so how many drops of water was he able to place before it flowed off? And there was 25. And you can see it forms that dome shape on there. Uh, that's because of surface tension, the way it's pulling all those molecules down. Because all the molecules are pulling on each other and there are no molecules on top of the surface, all those water molecules are pulling down. This creates, as he said, it's kind of a dome shape on top of that penny. This is all water on top of that penny. Okay, so there's a video here about a floating paperclip. So a paperclip, the uh, density of a paperclip is about 7.8. It's about iron or steel. It's pretty dense where water is one. So typically, you expect a paperclip to sink. So we're going to watch this video and see how we can maybe adjust that. Welcome back to Kids Fun Science. My name's Ken. Today's experiment is a floating paperclip. As always, adult supervision is required. What you need for this experiment is a bowl of water, scissors, paper towels, and a paperclip. So basically, you're going to have your bowl of water and paper clip, and, and you're going to cut the paper towels a size a little bit bigger than the paper clip itself. Now, this is a small paper clip. You put the paper towel on and then gently lay the paper clip on top of the paper. If you drop it too hard, the paper clip will sink. So how does this happen? Well, the science behind this amazing experiment works on surface tension. Surface tension is a thin sheet or skin formed by the water. Surface tension tightly holds those water molecules together. Thrust, if the surface tension is and the water remains undisturbed, it'll be able to support the paperclip like this experiment. The paperclip is not actually floating. It is simply being held up by the water surface due to the surface tension. Several insects, such as the grasshopper and the water spider, use this sheet to walk across the water. So the last one was a standard paperclip. This time I'm using an extra large paperclip, and you can see if I put it on very gently, there it goes, you can see the paper starts to sink because it gives it just the paperclip just enough time to get that surface tension, and then it's going to be able to stay up if it's not disturbed. Now, if you were to take your finger and tap the water, it might sink, or if you put a little bit of soap on your finger and touch the water, the soap would break down the surface tension, and it would sink all the way to the bottom. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to click thumbs up and to subscribe, and thanks for watching. Okay, that video seems really interesting. Oh, and uh, that video too. Let's go ahead and stop that. All right, so paperclip has a density of, of greater than one gram per cubic centimeter. That means in, it's is more dense than water and should sink. However, if you do it right, you have the ability to make it float. So I can show you another way of making it float. Watch the pay attention to the camera and the screen up here. Uh, so, the pay clip density is about 8, uh, 7.8 grams per centimeter. Now, the easiest way I found to do this is you can see what I have. I've created kind of a um, uh, Easter egg dipper with the paper clip. It's meant to, this is kind of the easiest way. The video talks about using the tissue paper underneath it. The trick is to not bump it when you leave the thing. It's a, it's a 
for the two that are floated, then I dropped them. Then I shrink it out. Very gently. So as you can see, it's floating on top see, there. I don't know if I can show a lamp house or not. Not really. But you can kind of see, if you look carefully, which I zoom in a little bit, you can see how the skin of the water actually is bending around the paper clip. The skin is actually bending. It's, again, it's that attraction between the molecules. You see how it bends around it. Yes, the paper is floating. I'm not going to do that because it's sinking. All right, so that is how you float a paper clip. That's the second part of the uh, surface tension lab from today. All right, let's move on. All right, and the last demonstration uh, we do with a mason jar and a strainer. It does kind of echo at first. I do apologize for that, but I'm going to go ahead and play it, and hopefully we won't do it too much. A demonstration, perhaps, that you've already seen is when a glass is completely filled with water. Then a cardboard is placed over the glass. It's inverted. And then the hand supporting the cardboard is removed. Atmospheric pressure causes the card to stay in place. This demonstration can actually mislead you regarding the understanding of the next demonstration. Let's add a little food coloring to this water so that it's more visible. Now let's pour that water into a mason jar with a wire screen lid in place of the normal cap. So the water enters the jar. Once again, we'll fill it to overflowing. We'll place a card on the screen and turn it upside down. But this time, instead of removing my hand, we'll remove the card. The question is, why doesn't the water come out through the screen? Surface tension is the answer to that question. The surface tension of the water around the small holes in the screen. If we tip the jar just slightly, we're able to cause the water to come out through the screen. All right, so why does the water stay in the mason jar when he moves the card? It's the lack of pressure at the top does help a little bit. That's what held the card in place the first time. It was really holding it in place is the, again, it's going through a screen. And the water molecules are really kind of sticking together, and they don't let go of each other enough to make it through that screen. So if one can't get through, none of them can get through. But once he tips the cup, he changes kind of the dynamics of it, and um, they can all flow through. But initially, it's the surface tension of the water prevents it from going through the screen. Now, again, we talked about water being a polar molecule because the way it combines, the way the electrons and protons and all stuff align in a molecule of water, you get a positive side, and you get a negative side. This negative side, positive side are kind of like the poles of a magnet, which makes water a polar molecule. Uh, which of the following is not an example of the surface tension of water? Well, there's drops of water on a window. Well, that's anytime you see a drop, that's a form of surface tension. It's pulling those molecules together. Uh, a water strider straight, skating across top of the water is taking advantage of surface tension. A bubble is round because of that surface tension, that water part of the soap, is sticking together. And then finally, when iron sinks in water, that's a prospect, that's a property of density. That is not surface tension. Um, that is density. All right. Now that is it. If you want to watch this, I'm going to play it. But uh, when you're done, you can submit. Uh, these are some cool things you can do at home uh, <laughs> dealing with surface tension. Take a plate of milk and drop some food coloring into the middle. As many different colors as you want. Take a Q-tip covered in soap and dip it right into the center of the food coloring to make fireworks. Because when you add the soap, awesome. it breaks the surface Science. tension and it causes the milk to kind of separate out. This one I discovered by chance the other day while I was drinking coffee. I was flicking the little stir across the surface of the coffee and I noticed these crazy little balls appearing. 
So I went home to try it again, and nothing happened. I tried a few different things to recreate the spheres, including mixing soap into my coffee, and sure enough, there they were again. Which makes me wonder what was in my coffee the other day. So it seems to be the soapy film that causes these little spheres to form, and the motion of the water tends to make the spheres last longer. It works on the milk and food coloring plate as well. You might try it with other liquids. This is a pretty interesting phenomenon that I had never heard of. If you have any guesses as to what it is, leave me a comment. This one's fun. Make a little boat out of a card and then place the boat on the surface of the water. Now use your soap to break the surface tension and power the boat. Take an open jar full of water and put a card over the top. Flip it over and it'll hold up. That is not surface now, this tension. That's a pretty well-known trick, but what about this one? The water stays That's in the That's surface jar. tension. Oh yeah. I forgot to mention that there's a screen on the top of this one. I switched them. <laughs> Trick da! I screwed the top so. of the jar over the screen so that it's on there really tight. Now when you turn the jar over, you can slide the card out and the surface tension across the screen is enough to hold the entire jar of water up. But it's still open. I can stick some needles into the screen and the surface tension still holds the water. <laughs> I love this one. Take a paper clip or a pen spring and balance it gently on the surface of the water. And if it doesn't work, you can always try with tissue paper. Oh, see, there we go. Place a bit of tissue paper on the surface of the water and move the tissue paper out from under the paper clip. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of soap on the end of a Q-tip. And if I touch the water with the end that doesn't have soap, nothing happens to the paper clip. But I'm gonna touch the surface with the soap and watch what happens. Again, soap is a great way to ball. break surface tension. Kind of That's why it cleans so well. This one's pretty easy. See how many drops of water you can fit on a penny. The number may surprise you. Oh. Uh. This is a bonus experiment and involves a little bit more than surface tension and should also involve some adult supervision. So as the pan heats up and I drop some water droplets into it, water droplets that hit the hot surface will vaporize quicker and quicker until eventually they won't and you can see the perfect little spheres they make. If I keep adding more water though, something strange happens. Who knew there was so much fun science in H2O? I did. All right, so if you've watched that, you found that interesting, uh, you're done, you go ahead and submit. I'll go ahead and submit one response just so you can see it's done, and you're done for the day. Uh, that is the homework for today, that is surface tension, it is something that kind of we take a moment to talk about when we're talking about um, water and states of matter because it is a unique property of water and some other materials as well. Hope this was informative. Have a wonderful rest of your day.